welcome back. Last night we did uh, World Touring Car 600 from Le Sartre, Le Mans. And tonight, well, when I woke up this morning after posting that video, I'd received some messages overnight saying, can you do Sardinia Road Course with a Tomahawk? And I've got a good, uh, the gentleman, thank you to you, sir, for passing on the details of the um, the Tomahawk and its setup, saying you could win by X amount, etc., etc. Well, I apologise, didn't want to do that. I followed a recent description about this track, and it said, actually, you can buy a car, no mods. It's a million pound buy, and you can go out and win it. And I did that. I bought the GTR 500 from Nissan, straight from Brand Central. As you can see, it requires no modifications. It comes with racing medium tyres. Settings will be traction control one, default ABS, everything else off. And it's a rolling start. It says 485k first place. And I think you win 753,000 if you um, do it with um, your driver quality intact, simple, crash free, bumper free, whatever. So here it is, it's uh, 15 laps. I've gone with medium tyres only, I've got no rain tyres, I haven't got to spend any more than a million. What I realised is if you do this twice, you've paid for the car already. It's quite an enjoyable race. And we've gone off the line there, we've made two places already. And we've dropped the fuel map, as you can see, down to... Uh, it's three on the fuel map, just trying to tune that in. And we're just going to try and keep it there for a little while and try and get through the field. Racing mediums, interestingly enough, I didn't really like start looking at the tyres till a little bit later. But they do try, they do burn through a little bit. This is a four wheel drive car, I believe. Am I right? I don't think it is. I think it's a rear wheel drive car. But in a very short minute, I will actually put uh, the brake balance to forward front just to try and keep the pressure off the rears because I noticed they were going a little bit. But here we go, we're racing through. We're, we're just a little bit off our top speed. Because we're down on the fuel map, we're just trying to conserve fuel. It says 8.1 laps to go there. I'm going to try and run till the 8th lap. So we do the heavy work this side of the pit stop. I'm going to take tyres and I'm thinking about rain. It looks a beautiful clear day down in Sardinia. Out in the Mediterranean off the toe of Italy. And uh, we'll see where we go. But here we go, coming through the line for the first lap. As I said yesterday, I'm not going to talk you through the driving. We've done all that through the licenses and circuit experiences. Uh, genuinely, you, sh you, you should be knowing where you're going and how you're doing. You don't need me to tell you how to drive the car in this, in this case. But this is just about making sure you get to the end of the lap and you win this end of the race and you win this one. You're at 16, that's lap one down. Fuel lap still on three. Fuel's down 15% gone on two laps. I think we're okay at that point. 7.9 laps remaining, so we're good. We might end up running a little bit of uh, one as we close in on the end of the lap. I really want to start saving fuel at this point by lifting and coasting and short shifting. I don't think we need to do that. We've got a right bunch of traffic in front of us here. And uh, just so you know, you don't drop your tea or your coffee, whatever you're drinking. You do make a little bit of a blunder here. Breaking on the hundred. Come down around these boys, and we're thinking we're doing all right. It's a bit of a mother's ruin, I'd say. Come around this corner, and for some reason, they all decide they're going to stack up, and I absolutely nail the back of that beamer. So I've got what looks like ending damage, I've got front end damage, front wheels, I'm down on power, and I'm thinking, oh my god, what's happening here? We're getting bunted from the back from the Ferrari. Got that Toyota Supra up my rear. I'm not accelerating. I'm pretty good. But also at this point, I know it's the tyre way. So the Beamer's going to come past me. I've, I've given him a savage beating in the in the rear. And as he comes past me, the the, the flashing warnings go off. So I guess that was me waiting for him to come back. And we're down to 15. So we've done a lap 16. We've done a lap with no gain. There's tyre smoke in front of me there. I dodge out the way to avoid it. Where are we? Lap three. Mr. Portilla there in the uh, Dodge Viper out in front. He was running the same Viper at, at the south, at Le Mans. 
race we did yesterday and we set a fair good pace I think here we go we've got no idea because we've never run this race before we've got no idea at all what the pitch strategy is for everyone else we're just going to try this on one one stop fuel and tyres as I said opening lap was 144 almost 145 in all reality and we lost two seconds on the next lap that lap two so I hope to make gain a bit back here Mr Portilla is some four seconds lap faster than me on my fastest lap so We've got some ground to make up and we're 25.7 seconds behind the leader. We're not really catching anybody at this point. So we've got 6.8 laps of fuel. And we've got three laps down, so that takes the lap nine. So I'm starting to think actually it's quite encouraging. We can actually put some some power down, get that fuel map to something where it needs to be. We'll just make it overtakes now. So this is good. The Ferrari takes to the off-road. Let's see how we do as we catch it down the start of this track. Skipping through the, uh, the actual menu there. Move the brake balance forward by the Cedarwood. Not seeing any rain, so I'm pretty confident the racing mediums are what we're going to be using. That was a bit of gamble on my, my part, just to not buy any wets. But I was getting into the race and thinking, that's what we'll do. We'll just, we'll just give it a gamble, see where we go. improved our fastest time to 141 and then we're oh, breaking through the traffic there we get a nudge from the right which which is to be fair is it's quite fair i was punching a hole where there wasn't one there there we go up on my previous personal best perfect sector as they say and i'm starting to think now we're halfway almost halfway through to the eighth lap will put us halfway through the race and more and we've got 63% fuel six laps remaining so I'm thinking we could go to lap 10 and we could uh, give it all the beans all the power, all the everything that it wants but then I'm looking at the tyres and I can't feel the tyres giving way at all so by the sound of it by the feel of it the car's doing perfectly alright no Let's see where we do for a lap time on this one. Mr. Portilla stopped already. He stopped on four laps at the end of the fourth lap. Wow. I'm only 13 seconds behind the car in first place now. If you think I've gone quiet, I have. Just checking out things, making sure we're all right. So yeah, just making our way through here. Was that Mr. Portiller? It was Mr. Portiller after pitting. So he's come out of the pits and he's going to make his way past me there. Messed up, slide into the grass. actually thinking this is going to be a bit of a challenge and at this point I am actually thinking we are we're on the cars for a bit of a battle here if Portilla is able to pit and get ahead we're going to pit at roughly the same time next and we're going to have in the region of seven laps to go can he do seven laps on a refill but if he gets some 20 seconds ahead of me now He's going to have to do two pit stops. So I've got to keep with him. I've got to think about that. 51% of fuel left. Four and a half, nearly five laps in. So I can go nearly nine laps. I can go eight laps and put the uh, fuel map to two or one. Get a couple of sprint laps in. We might be good here. He's now to break away. He's to accelerate there a bit. So let's see how we do. Let's get Aston 141.2 still not the fastest lap the fastest laps are 141.0 let's see if we can keep up with this guy but we're into third place now so we are making progress there's people pitting so it looks like for most people it's a two stop strategy 
take a lift up twice. I'm wondering if Paul Tiller's stopping out with four laps. He's going to make three stops. So I've got a chance here. And with no disrespect to the gentleman, the person that messaged me overnight about using a tomahawk, I generally think if I'm, I don't need a tomahawk at, was it, seven million credits? This car cost a million, and it's quite good, it's quite stable. It's 100 pp more than, than the car I used last night. So I think I've got a definite winner for that one, for this, for this race here. If this is going to stick it to the end, one pit stop's all it needs. We've got a good choice of car. Stable, it's good to drive. Didn't need any mods, which is awesome. With no mods, you get it straight out the box. It's going to drive well if the setup's pretty good. It's not going to be the Lamborghini Huracan that we experienced at Barcelona track that, that just had oversteer like that. You know, this, this car drives really well. A little bit of uneven tyre wear front to back, but I wonder if you can go front, front soft. And probably rears on the hards and keep the fronts on mediums. That would that would probably improve longevity. And the fronts will wash first, but maybe not. What we've got here is a good car out the box. So cars in third and fourth just pitted. They're dropping down the old rankings now. We're on lap seven. So I'm thinking with 34% left, three laps to go. I'm thinking we can turn the beans up here. End of this lap, we're going to turn it up. There's Mr. Paul Tiller. He's only three seconds ahead of me. He's not far. But I think he's gunning for it as well. I think he's gone 4-4. Four, four. That'll put him in on 12 and he's got three laps for him at the end. His consumption, his fuel consumption is quite significant, I think. I don't know whether his tyre's stopping. My rears are probably down to 55% wear now. Fronts, 40%. So, we're at a point where we're going to need to change them, I think. Nothing overly dramatic, but just under 29, 30% fuel. Lap six. Are we going to put past the lap in here? Are we going to get a a 138 in something to compete with Mr. Portilla? Something to keep me interested in the race? You never know. You don't ever know. Okay, well, there we go. We're up to power one. So fuel maps on one, we did that at the uh, exit at the tight 90 left at the end of that last lap. We're going to try and throw some lap times in now, just before we pit. So we're on lap 8. There's Mr. Portilla, he's 3.2 seconds ahead. Down to 2.8 after that corner combination second place. This is actually feeling and working out quite well. What we don't need now is rain. There's windmills blowing down the valley. We've got the uh, the blimp up in the air. Good crowds watching the race. As we come up to this corner here, we're going to break on the 100. Just on those shadows, just on the 100 board. Yeah, fronts and rears are looking a bit rough. Traction control's cutting in. Felt the gap back end go a little bit there. He's pulled the lead out to 3.4. But we know we're pitting now, I believe. I believe we're going to come in this lap, showing 1.4 of fuel. Let's see what happens. Is it the right thing to do at 14%? Or do we go one more lap? I'm thinking those tyres are looking done for me. We've only got seven laps to go. The tyres will be down to there. We've got 1.2 of fuel. We've got the fuel warning. Portilla's gone to the pit, so he is on a 4-4-4 strategy. We've gone in as well on an 8-7. So here we go. We're going to choose tyres, which I believe we did. We chose mediums again because it's the only choice. Portilla's in on hards. He's refueling now. We're changing tyres. And then we're going to...
gonna go fuel and we're gonna fuel all the way. He's fueled all the way and he's on his way. Drop down fifth. We're out of pits in seventh, there we go. Nobody really approaching us, can't see anybody. There we go, we're six seconds off the lead, seven seconds off the lead. So if you'll map on one, we've got seven laps to go. Let's see how it goes. We've only done 25 mile in this car, it's brand new off the lot. And I think in that discussion that was being had last night, that was an excellent shout. GTR GT500 08 it's 527 brake horsepower at 1100 kilo it's nat naturally aspirated so it's a non turbo and it's from engine rear wheel to confirm what I said earlier and the PP is just under the limit so PP79417 and with that you generally with that you can generally just drive the car and it will compete at this level definitely will it's not a problem no, it's a good little car i think it seems it drives in hand as well it's my kind of car now i've got traction control one on don't really suffer for that okay you probably accelerate out the corner a bit but we're conserving fuel at the same time so we're making the to keep the race well within reach so this is the first lap out of the pits and we've used 14 percent to back up to fourth place there's a couple of one car pits he's low on fuel we'll go around the outside here into third place 7.3 laps around aiming with only five laps to go 30, 40, 50, and it's 6 in reality because of the one we're on. Sounds right, doesn't it? So up into second place, we're doing them again. We're chasing Mr. Mr. Portillo. He's three seconds out. So you'll remember this sort of scenario. We're chasing him down. We've got good fuel level. We've got good tyres. And we're, oh, we've changed the fuel map down to three to try and conserve a bit. So we're just going to try and keep him in range. We have a feeling he's going to pit on 12. I don't reckon he can stretch his fuel. I reckon at this point we are... I think catbird seat might be the expression for you NASCAR guys. It's an old saying from way back when that I remember. I have heard it in many recent years. So here we go, coming down to the end of lap 10. The last lap was 147.17, our current fastest to 145.37. Are we going to get close to that on fuel map 3? Mr. Portilla is only 2.7 seconds ahead. He's actually pulling away now, he's just busting it out to 3 seconds. And then we're pulling it straight back and we're on the straight. 139.702, so we're closing down on him. We're within a second, well, 1.4 seconds is fastest lap, faster than us. Places four and five, six, seven, all go to the pit. And we put the fuel map to two, so we're going to try and close it down a bit more. It's 2.7 seconds ahead. We come through this corner, it seems. We can do that in third gear, I need to hold that. It's time we do this, and we will. We can grind this one. This one's relatively steady. We can actually do. A little bit of a series can't we we can do we know now we've got a competitive car for the Le Mans 600 and we've got the World Touring Cup 800 here at, uh, at Sardinia and we've got an easy win one and a half million roughly between the two races every hour so it's a good grinder if you want to do it and you'll get 40 odd 50 odd miles in a day and therefore you'll you'll get your roulette ticket that I know everybody loves at the minute so hey, let me know if you've won any engines I've got one no idea what I want to do with it I've got a 2JZ Supra which uh, engine which I'm guessing I can put in something small and Japanese 
maybe something small American if there's an F body. Body Camaro, but I don't think there will be. Here we go then, another lap down, lap 11. Just closing that out, where do we go? A 139.1, so we're improving ourselves. So that puts us with 0.8 at the guy in front, here we are. He's got to be on his last lap, Mr. Gomez in third place has gone to the pits because he's down on fuel. We're giving Mr. Portilla a bit of hassle, a bit of hurry up. We've got fuel map one. We've got five laps of fuel remaining, so we know we can stay on this. And we're past him. He's given up. He hasn't got the fuel to keep up this, I don't think. Got a bit of a wobble there. As it stands, no rain whatsoever, folks. None. And if there's any rain coming now, it's got to come hard. Because we're running to the line. Tyres are looking good, probably about coming down to quarter wear. Which will see us down to half wear then for the end of the race, because two and a half laps to go. Oops, 53%, so, so we're good, we can keep charging on current fuel. Oh, and look, there's the first tail marker, first back ender. We can actually uh, start thinking about lapping people. Mr. Portilla, I think, is going to pit at the end of this lap. Pit at the end of four, the end of eight, and he's going to pit at the end of 12. Now, if I can remember correctly, and I remember thinking this whilst I was driving this, the gentleman that spoke to me overnight through PlayStation on text was saying he's going to win this race by 26 seconds clear in the tunnel, which to me is a decent enough lead. Portilla's gone to the pit. So once the next car comes up behind him, how are we going to do? And we're putting a 39.7, not as fast a lap. So Portilla's now into the fuel, he's changed tyres. He's fueled to 65 litres, 65%. And we're 24 seconds ahead. Got the back markers to go, there's that BMW that I salted let's say earlier in the race that's that gt40 mr mendoza's pitted with five percent fuel left so he's on a three stopper as well we've got 30 percent 38 percent 39 percent fuel can't read 3.3 laps remaining and we've got two laps after this so we're good on fuel I say good on fuel, but that, but that count, we're looking like we might just have to back it off for the last lap, just a wee bit. But we're 26 seconds ahead. 27. So, we're making, pulling the gap, we're about to lap 17th place. He's going to pull over so we can get past him and we don't be tap his back in, because we're just silly. Got to give him far more room than that. 20 seconds, seconds ahead. Going across the line. That's a 138.767. We're still 0.4 behind Mr. Portilla's fastest lap. He can move that car. He's there. And then here we go. Let's just have a summary of where we're going. We're on lap 14. 26 seconds clear. We haven't got the fastest lap. 30% fuel left. Which is, looks like more than enough now. 2.5 laps to go on the fuel. We've actually got 1.75. We're doing good. We're down on the clock here. We've actually done 43 miles on this new car. 42.4. As I say, it, it's driving fairly well. It's, it's comfortable. It suits me. Do I need to be more confident and take off the traction control? No. No. I'm quite comfortable with the traction control doing what it does. I've just got to stop my cat from flooring. She's a little mare. One and a half laps to go. Blue flags are waving. It's coming 
coming round. We're going up to lap 15 and finish this. Last lap then, 20% of fuel left. We're good. We're going to keep the full beads on. We're going to keep going. We've got a little gaggle of cars in front of us to overtake. But we're some 31.7 seconds ahead of the guy behind. Mr. Portilla. So, past the Subaru, past the 911, past the NSX. All respectable cars. And we're on AI hard, by the way. We're on hard setting for the game. I don't tend to drive it on, on the softer ones. I think uh, as I'm progressing through the game, I don't really need any any uh, un, un, uh, unnatural assistant. I think is assistance is the right thing to say. Traction control is perfectly legitimate. ABS is perfectly legitimate. I don't think we need track guides, corner markers, circuit, the racing line. I don't think I need any of them. I think I know the game well enough now. And I'm hoping you guys do. If you're spending the time doing it, if you're spending the time on it, all well and good. And with that being said, if you are subscribed, thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed, I'm wondering why not. We've just... Uh, Posting the best part of 300 videos on Gran Turismo now, all instructional. And we're now getting into the fun stuff for me, the ones where I get to race and I'm not uh, chasing the medals. So I can show you how to do it. But here we come then, folks. Last lap. Making the last corner. We're just underneath the lap of fuel as we come across the line. Don't think we're going to set any records here. We're not going to get the fastest lap. But here we go. Busted. There we go. Job done. Lovely looking car. I've not seen any white bad ones basically. Drives well, handles well, and it's not a tomahawk at 7.7 .7 million credits. It's a million credits, and it's an easy win, and it's a fun win, and that's a good race. So they were 33 seconds ahead of the nearest car, which was the Viper SRT. And for me, I'm happy with that. As I said, if you are subscribed, thank you very much, and I look forward to further subscriptions. Take care folks, have a good one, see you on the